advanced function 7.6 solving quadratic trigonometric equations. So now we're going to use some of our, our rules that we learned to solve quadratics. We're also going to use some substitutions and just follow along and we'll see what we can do with these. So when you have something squared is equal to 9, you want to take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of one side, that's going to give me plus or minus 3, right, square root of 9. So that's going to leave me with two little equations to solve. 2 cosecant x minus 1 is equal to 3, and 2 cosecant x minus 1 is equal to negative 3. So I bring the 1 over here that gives me 4. I divide by 2, and I get cosecant x is equal to 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that means that sine x is equal to a half. So it's 1 over that. So where is sine x equal to a half? Well, if you look at the domain that we have here, so minus pi to 0. So this would be minus 2 pi, right, for the basic sine function. So when I'm in here, it could never be equal to 1 half. So this is going to be no solution for this little equation. If we go to this equation, we get 2 cosecant x is equal to minus 2. Cosecant x is equal to minus 1. Or sine x equals minus 1. And you can see by the graph here, there's only going to be one solution. And that would be at x equals minus pi over 2. So that's your only solution. And remember that we're looking at this interval here between minus pi and 0. Okay, so the second equation, we have co squared x minus 3 sine squared x is equal to 1. Now, it's impossible to solve. This is like having an x squared and a y squared in an equation and trying to solve a quadratic. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is replace one of these, and it will work with either choice that you make. So I can say that co squared x equals o squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x, or I could do sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, so you have the choice of which one you want to pick. I'll try the first one here. So I have 1 minus sine squared x, 1 minus sine squared x minus 3 sine squared x, minus 1 is equal to 0. So 1 minus 1, that's gone. And minus 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine squared x, that would be minus 4 sine squared x is equal to 0. And you can see that if I simplify that, I'm just going to end up with sine x equals 0. So let's take a look at this one as well um, using, using another equation. Instead of using this, we'll use 1 minus cos squared x, and I'll show you how it still, it still works. So I have cos squared x, so just coming back to over here, cos squared x minus 3 times 1 minus cos squared x is equal to 1. So cos squared x minus 3 plus 3 cos squared x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now I have cos squared x plus 3 cos squared x. That's 4 cos squared x's minus 3 minus 1 more is minus 4. Bring it to the other side. Could have left that one there, I guess. So I get cos squared x is equal to 1, and cos x is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, so now I'm going to check for my solutions between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. So for the sine function, that would give me something like this. Here's minus 2 pi to 2 pi. And my cos function is going to go like this and like this. So there's my negative 2 pi 
to 2 pi. So where's sine x equal to 0? So we have minus 2 pi, minus 2 pi, that's here. This is going to be pi, then 0. Oh, sorry, I forgot, minus pi. 0, pi, and 2 pi. And if we go to this equation here, where is cos x equal to 1? You'll see I get x equals minus 2 pi. So plus or minus 1, so that's this one. That's minus pi, and I think you can see that we're going to have the very same solution. So it doesn't matter which one you choose, just make sure that you're following the domain. Okay, flip the page. Number three, cos squared x minus 2 sine x cos x minus sine squared x equals 0. 0 is less than or equal to 2x is less than or equal to pi. So you should simplify this first, divide everything by 2. Okay, so that's the domain I want to use. This is my equation. Now, if you look at this equation, you'll see that there's no way you can make this into just one, one, um, one function by um, getting rid of the sine squared or the cos squared. But if you look more carefully, or even sometimes it's good enough for you to rearrange it to see what you might have here. Anytime you see 2 sine x cos x, you should automatically be thinking of sine 2x. And what's this one? Cos squared x minus sine squared x? Cos squared x minus sine squared x equals cos 2x. So we have cos 2x minus sine 2x is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to have to make a a fraction out of this. So I'm going to leave cos 2x here, bring sine over here, and I'm going to divide both sides by cos 2x. And that's going to set me up for a nice solution of 1 is equal to tan 2x. Okay, so where is tan x? We've done one similar to this before. Where's tan, tan 2x is equal to 1 so 2x is equal to pi over, where is this 1? Do you know your special triangles by now should be pi over 4? So that means x is equal to pi over 8. And if you sketched it, tan x, tan 2x has a period of pi over 2. So that means this is going to be pi over 4. We're between 0 and pi over 2. So it's going to be right here, and that would be my pi over 8, just for a quick sketch for you. Okay, the next one, cos 2x equals cos squared x between minus pi and pi. So cos 2x and cos squared x, so I can replace this one. And if I want to keep everything in terms of cosine here, that will make things a little bit easier for me, right? So always look to find something, um, 2 cos squared x minus 1, that gives you just dealing with the same um, trigonometric function. So now I'm going to rearrange. So I'm going to have 2 cos squared x minus a cos squared x. Oh, I'll write it all out. I already started the 2. Minus cos squared x. And I'm going to bring the 1 over here. So now I have cos squared x is equal to 1, so cos x is equal to plus or minus 1. So where is cos x equal to plus or minus 1? And again, you can make a quick sketch. So we're doing, this is cos, and this is my minus pi, and my pi, and where is equal to plus or minus 1? So we have this solution, this solution, and this solution. So x is equal to minus pi, 0, and pi. Okay, so you could do um, the same thing. You could do another, do this another way if you, um, if you want to try it another way. So we could use, instead of 2 cos squared x minus 1, 
we could have used cos squared x minus sine squared x equals cos squared x. And that obviously is going to give you minus sine squared x, maybe this one's easier, equal to 0, sine squared x equals 0, and sine x equals 0. So if you sketched the sine function now between minus pi and pi, you would end up, where is it 0? You end up with the very same solutions. Okay. Okay, number five, I've got, um, well, I'm sure you can recognize what this is right away. 49 tan squared minus 64. That, of course, is a difference of squares. So that's going to give you 7 tan plus 8 times 7 tan minus 8 equals 0. And then you have two equations to solve. I'm not going to finish this for you. I'm sure you can figure Oh, sorry, this should be 710x. I have a cold, can you tell? I'm, my brain isn't working quite as well as it should be. So 10x equals, bring this over, so be minus 8 over 7. And 10x equals 8 over 7. Okay, so now all you're going to do is use your calculator and find, I didn't give a domain for this one. I think it might be an example out of your textbook. Um, one of your homework questions, so you can check that out. Okay, this was also a question from your homework, or your textbook, I'm sorry, 8c. It says 2 sine x secant x minus 2 thirds sine x equals 0. So I chose this one for a demonstration because it, um, it requires you to do some factoring. So if you said, well, what can I do? I could write this as 1 over cos, and then you're not getting anywhere, right? You'd have sine over cos, it's tan, and you still have the sine, and no. So you have to just kind of be a little creative here. So if I take out a 2 and a sine x, I think you'll see that I could have secant x and take out this 2 and a sine x, and I get minus root 3 equals 0. So what are the two solutions? It would be like me saying, oh, I have x and x minus 2 equals 0. What's x equal to? You say, well, when this is 0 or this part 0. So the same thing here. So I have where is 2 sine x equal to 0 and where is secant x minus root 3 equal 0. So that's just sine x equals 0. And this is secant x equals 0. No, sorry, root 3. What am I saying? Secant x equals root 3. Now, root 3, that's not a special triangle solution, right? So if I said cos x equals 1 over root 3, that would be the same in the same equation, right? So where is sine x equal to 0 between 0 and 2 pi? Well, that's pretty easy. 0 and 2 pi. So 0 pi, 2 pi. And for cos x equals 1 over root 3, you could use your calculator for this, and I'm just going to tell you what the answers are. And 5.33. So you make sure you're in the right quadrants. Okay, so I have one more example to do for you, and um, this one requires a little more factoring. That's why I picked this one as well. So we have, this is 9c from your homework. It says 4 cos 2x plus 10 sine x minus 7 equals 0. So I want to write it in terms of sine x. So cos 2x, we're going to replace cos 2x by 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus 10 sine x minus 7 equals 0. Okay, so now I'm going to expand. So I had 4 minus 8 sine squared x plus 10 sine x minus 7 equals 0. I can combine um, just the two numbers. So I have 8 minus 8 sine squared x plus 10 sine x 
Um, positive 4 minus 7, that would be minus 3, equals 0. And remember, when you're solving a quadratic, you can divide by a negative number and just keep it all the same because it's an equation. And now I'm going to factor this. So I'm looking for a product of 24 and a sum of negative 10. And you should be thinking minus 6 times minus 4, or minus 6 plus minus 4. I'm going to put them over 8. That's going to give me minus 3. Uh, minus 3 over 4, and this is going to be minus 1 over 2. So that gives me 4. Now remember, this is just like sine squared x. I could have written this like this, 8x squared minus 10x plus 3, and you would know how to factor this, right? So if you need to, you can say let sine x equal x, and then write out your equation, and then just substitute it back in in the end. So I get 4 sine x minus 3 times 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. And now I solve each of these little bracketed forms. So I would get sine x equals 3 quarters, which isn't a special triangle, and sine x equals 1 half. And I'm between 0 and 2 pi, so 0 to 2 pi. That means sine x is a half. We know those. That's x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And sine x equals 3 quarters. Well, you're going to have to do some calculator work. That's going to give you your x value. And that's going to give you, um, let me see, 0 0.85. That's 1. So that's in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, it would be x equals 3.14 minus that, and that's going to give you approximately 2.29. Okay, so hopefully that helps straighten out some of the things you could do with quadratic trigonometric equations. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe. Support the channel, and I'll keep on working for you. Bye.